Hello and welcome back to Adelphi University's Human Performance Lab. Today we're going to be taking you through our EKG prep. So the things we're going to need today, we have right over here. We've got our gauze, clean gauze. We've got 10 EKG electrodes, some rubbing alcohol, and our ultrasound gel to help with our conductivity. All right, so our friend over here, Jacob, has agreed to be our subject. Thank you, Jacob. The first thing we need to look for, of course, is to have them take their shirt off. Uh, upon taking their shirt off, we're going to examine their chest. Thankfully, Jake does not have too much hair here. Some people do, and if they did, of course, we'd have to shave that to allow for better sticking to the skin. This entire prep is all about making sure that our electrodes hook up nicely and we're getting a clean, clear signal. And so, primarily using our gauze and alcohol, we are going to be abrading the skin, uh, making sure that all of the dead skin is worn off so that the electrodes will not fall off and we're getting a nice signal through. So the first thing we have to do here, of course, is identify all of the sites that we're going to be using. So I'll have them turn toward you guys a little bit just so we can get a pretty clear picture. The first things that we do are the right and left arms and the right and left leg leads that we use. Now, in a regular EKG, if you were just sitting still or lying still, the leads would actually be placed on the legs, but because we're exercising, all of the leads will be placed on the torso to make sure that when we're moving around, we're still getting a clear signal. Okay, so the first ones that we're gonna look at are the right and the left arms. So what we're gonna have him do is shrug up, beautiful, until you see his clavicles pop out here. We're gonna to go to the very end, top corners of his clavicles. We'll take our alcohol and our gauze pad, and we're gonna wipe those areas down. So after palpating, one spot, two spot, and then you can just take the other clean side and brush off that alcohol. Okay, from there, what we're gonna do, we'll take our electrodes, we're going to put just a little bit of ultrasound gel on them, only in the very middle where the conduction is taking place. Okay, and we're gonna place those leads directly in those spots. So you can have them relax because they're not gonna be doing that in the test. We have our red spots from the abrasion and we can use that for the placement of our leads. Okay, now some electrodes come wet already. They have some kind of gel on them uh, these do not, and that's why we use our gel. Of course, if you already have gel on your electrodes, there's no need to add extra. So we'll place our second one on here. All right, beautiful. So the next one we're gonna focus on is the right and the left legs. So the way that we start that is by asking our subject to suck in, inhale, until we can see the bottom of, uh, bottoms of their ribs here. Okay, Jake, you can relax for just a second while I get this set up. All right. Go ahead one more time. So we'll suck in. We'll palpate those spots. So we should be looking for just the very bottoms of his ribs. We're gonna go slightly below to make sure that we're not over any bone. We're gonna wipe with our alcohol first and then our clean gauze. Thank you, sir. And once again, you can ask them to relax. You look for those red spots from the abrasion and you can place your electrodes. So here we've got one. Now if you notice, these should be just about directly on top and below one another. And we've got two. Okay, beautiful. So those are just our reference leads. Now from here, we're gonna go into our V leads. So the first lead that we're looking for, V1, is going to be on the right side of his body. We're gonna find V1 and V2 at the same time. So those are going to be in the fourth intercostal space in the mid chest. And we're going to palpate that by finding his clavicle. Right underneath his clavicle, we find one. We're gonna find the next intercostal space, that's two. 
the next is the third, and finally come down to the fourth intercostal space here. Now you want to find where the sternum is and go just outside of the sternum, again, so we're avoiding placing an electrode over the bone. So after we find those spots, we're going to take our alcohol. I'll do it one more time just to make sure that I have the right placement. Good, nice and close to the sternum. Wipe off the alcohol. And then our clean gauze. Beauty. Okay. Okay, so we've got one here. So that's V1 on the right side. And we've got V2 on the left side. All right. So the next leads we're working on here is going to be V3, V4, V5, and V6. We're not going to go directly in order here. We're going to start with V4 because V3 is in reference to V4. Now, what we're looking for to start off is the fifth intercostal space. So had we palpated down to the fourth, now we know we're going to go one space below. So we're going to find that fifth intercostal space right here. Generally speaking, it's going to be directly below the end of the pec. Now in some older individuals or some heavier individuals, of course, the pec might be placed a little bit lower or lay a little bit lower on the chest. Similarly in women, now for women you would have to move those, uh, move the breast tissue out of the way in order to properly palpate that fifth intercostal space. So after I clean that entire fifth intercostal space with some alcohol, I'll take my clean gauze next and just wipe that off to make sure all the excess alcohol and anything else left behind is all gone. So from there, I'm going to take my electrode. We're going to place V4 first. Now that's going to be midclavicular, right along the midclavicular line. So where that intersects with our fifth intercostal space. So generally speaking for these preps, you want to make sure that you're standing directly in front of your subject to make sure that you have a good sight. So I'm going to block you guys just real quickly to make sure. I'll stand slightly off to the side. We're going to go mid clavicular, straight down here and place our V4. Okay, now from here, we're going to place V3. Now V3 is going to be directly in between V2 and V4 on the fifth intercostal space. So we've got right here. Now you might notice that these electrodes are overlapping slightly. There's no problem there so long as the electrodes, which are these smaller circles within the electrode, are touching the skin directly and not being touched by the foam sticky part of the electrode on the outside. In some very large individuals, you might find that these leads are spread out uh, much further apart, but for your average individual, you are gonna see some overlap here. So we're gonna move on to our V5 lead. Now our V5 is on the anteroaxillary line, and you're gonna find that's directly uh, in between your left arm and left leg leads. Okay, and once again, we're going to follow that fifth intercostal space, placing our lead, and just double checking to make sure it's directly in line. So now we're going for our V6 lead. Now V6 is placed along the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. Because we're going to be exercising, I'm going to shift it a little bit further uh, anteriorly just because I don't want his arm rubbing, rubbing against the lead during exercise and creating extra artifact. Now, had this been a sedentary test, if we're just having him lying down or sitting down, no movement involved, of course, we would have them lift up their arm, turn to the side and we would find along our fifth intercostal space, directly below and on the mid axillary line, okay? Again, for our purposes, this is going to be placed slightly anteriorly, just like so. 
All right, so now that we've got all of our leads placed, everything was prepped, we're going to go ahead and take our lead wires here and get started with those. So before we even place any of these wires on, we're just gonna attach it to our subject. So I'm gonna ask that my subject hold this in front of them. Just like a belt, we're gonna wrap it around. And we want these to be tight, but not too tight, just so that they're not moving around so much during exercise. How does that feel? Comfortable. Feels comfortable? Good. All right, so from there, if all of these lead wires are untangled, we're gonna find that they're in the proper order of placement. So the first one that we're gonna look at here is our right leg lead. Now, we're gonna come right over, find the right leg uh, electrode that we've placed. We're going to clamp down on the lead wire first. We're going to place that clamp over the electrode and then release. We don't want to just shove it right onto the, uh, the electrode. That might strip the connections on our lead wire or electrode itself. And we're gonna find artifact and not a great connection. And so the next one we're going to get here is our right arm. So we're gonna find our right arm electrode. Once again, clamping down, sliding over, and letting go. From there, we've got our V1. We've got V2. We've got V3. V4. V5. V6. And then we're going to have our left arm and our left leg wires. So at this point, if you've got any wires hanging off that aren't attached to an electrode, you probably missed one, so you gotta go back uh, every wire has a little knob on the end that tells you what lead it's supposed to go to. So it makes it easy when you're hooking those wires up. From here, what we would do is we would find some kind of bandage roll. We also have uh, very small and tight vests that we can put on to ensure that these wires aren't moving around too much. So we would just ask that they bunch them up on their stomach we're going to grab our bandage here, place it down. Once again, they'll hold it, and we'll just begin wrapping around. Okay, you can let that go, thank you. Go ahead, you wanna roll those around for me? Thank you, sir. And we can just tuck that in the back there. So that's a proper prep right there. Now what we wanna do is we wanna come over to the computer and we're going to enter all of our patient's information. So the first thing we need to do is find our patient here. So we're gonna be using Jacob here. So we're going to be going Carmine for the last name, Jacob for the first. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit search. Now, he shouldn't be in the system here, so after searching and nothing comes up, right, we find no matching records, we're gonna go ahead and hit new. Now it's gonna prompt us to enter all of his information here. We're not worried about social security number or MRN here. We're gonna go date of birth, and that's 10-13-1995. Okay, so it gives us his max predicted heart rate here. And we're gonna go down to his height. And of course we are 63 inches. 
His weight is 184 pounds. Now all of this we would have gotten before we started the prep, of course, using a scale. And we're going to come down here. Now, important to check off beta blocker in last 24 hours. I'm just going to go ahead and hit no. Some people do have it, yes, and we need to know that for the test based on what the beta blocker is going to do to our heart rate response, to our blood pressure response, and to the actual electrical signal being sent down through the heart. Just check to make sure we've got everything in here. Now, attending physician, we're going to go ahead and just put whoever your attending physician is. Ours is John Wygand. We're not worried about referring. Technician, I'm right here. Department, we're going to go exercise science, Adelphi University. Now come down here. Reason for our test here. Now this is just going to be a functional capacity evaluation. For our adult fitness members, we would click on our adult fitness program. And there's a whole list here of other things that you can use this test for. Now from there, one more time, just checking to make sure we've got everything in here. And it looks like we're all good. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now from there, we're going to come back to our subject. We're going to ask that they lean up against the bed here. Okay. Just relax yourself. I want you to stand nice and normally. We're going to do an impedance check. So that's going to be this button up here, the person standing with all of these electrodes on. Click on that, and this is going to come up. Now, if we did a proper prep and placement, these leads should all come up green. If any of the leads are not green, we'll go ahead and fix those leads. So we're going to hit start, and just wait for all of them to pop up. So we've got green, so far so good, right on down, and they're all green. So. Now that they're green, we know they're all good, everything's been placed well, we can go ahead and hit exit and get ready to perform our test. So that's all we got today for you guys with our EKG prep. We hope you guys learned something, we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.